So Dominic Cummings has defended driving hundreds of miles to Durham with his wife and child, saying he behaved responsibly, legally and exercised his judgment. During a rare press conference in the gardens of Downing Street, the PM's most senior adviser refused to resign or apologise, saying he made the decision based on the well-being of his family. We're joined now by former Labour adviser Aisha Hazarika, who says Cummings should resign, and former UKIP politician Suzanne Evans, who says he was acting in the best interests of his family. Uh, so, Aisha, no regrets, no apology. He hasn't even considered standing down or handing in his resignation. What did you make? I mean, you've been an adviser to a Labour uh, party, so you know how important that role is for the MPs that you're working for. What does it say when an advisor, a chief advisor, albeit, becomes the story himself? Is it about the story or is it about the power that Dominic Cummings seemingly wields? Well, it's about both. Um, the power behind the throne is incredibly important. And as the principal advisor to the prime minister, that makes Dominic Cummings arguably the most important man or woman in um, British politics. And the fact that he was the architect of the slogan, you know, stay at home, protect lives, you know, save, save lives, protect the, the NHS. And then he was doing something very different. And look, you know, we all sat through that very, very long uh, press conference. And I'm afraid to quote, you know, the common sense phrase that's been bandied around by the government. It just didn't pass the smell test. You know, anybody at that time who had symptoms or their partner had symptoms, they were told to stay at home. They were not told to jump in their car and drive 260 miles up the road where their daddy had a nice big house with like a massive set of woods in the garden because that doesn't apply to most people. Parents up and down the country have been struggling with what would happen if one or both of them got sick. What about single parents cooped up in tiny flats without having huge expansive space where they could all go? I mean, this just doesn't pass as melted. It reminded me of the Prince Andrew um, interview, to, to be honest, and the whole fiasco about the eyesight was, I mean, it was laughable. Mm. The idea that you say, right, I went up to Durham to protect my child, but then I wasn't sure if I, if I was safe to drive and my eyesight was very good. So I got the baby, put it in the car and then went on a, yeah. on a 30 mile drive. It just doesn't make any sense. You know, mm. I feel like they, they've treated us like idiots. Do you concede, though, that uh, clearly he was worried for his wife's health? He felt like perhaps he could be exposed to COVID. So it sounds like he panicked as a father and did what he felt was the best thing for his family, albeit outside of the spirit of the rules or breaking the rules, because he knew, as he said, his niece and his sister had offered to look after their child if someone was to get coronavirus and if they were to become ill. And actually, it was the father's instinct that he just wanted to protect his family and he wasn't really considering how it was going to look, him driving 260 miles to the family farm up in Durham. He just wanted to get somewhere safe to protect his family. Thousands and thousands of people up and down the country, thousands of people watching today will have been in just those agonising situations. It is not exceptional to be in a couple. It is not exceptional to have a four-year-old son. This is what everybody has been going through, but everybody else got it into their heads that they didn't drive to be near family. If we had, we, if we had all done that, what would the situation be? Remember, at this point as well, the R rate in London is very, very high. The R rate in the Northeast is not very high. He, he, he said he was possibly had symptoms. His wife definitely had symptoms. Let's say they had had an accident and someone had to come and help them. Let's say they had broken down on the way. They are spreading the virus. They ended up having to go to hospital, by the way. So there's, there are people who have had symptoms going into a hospital in an area where the, the, the R rate wasn't that high. I, I understand that he had concerns as a father. Who doesn't? But think of all the thousands of your viewers who must have lost family. They couldn't even say goodbye to their loved ones. They're, you know, really struggling through this. We've all made sacrifices. This is the unique thing about this pandemic. In some senses, we have all been in it together. The shared sacrifice that we have all made has hurt us all all in very, very different but very devastating ways. So then to find out that it's one rule for the Prime Minister's chief advisor and another rule for all of us, it is an insult, quite frankly. And
Suzanne, isn't that the issue because of the damage that's been done here? And that's why there's so much public anger, that actually there is that feeling from people that they'd been there sticking by what they thought the rules were to the letter, or as Dominic Cummings is now saying, well, actually, I believed I could exercise a bit of judgment around the rules. So although people might be sympathetic to the situation he found himself with his child, actually, there is that feeling from people that he's acting differently. He made the rules, but those at the top are acting differently, as Aisha was saying, one rule for them and the one rule for the rest of us. You use the word damage there. I don't actually see any damage that's been done here. I think Dominic Cummings has made it very clear that, first of all, he did think he was abiding by the law. And from what I can understand, there were certainly exceptions for people who were allowed to move around the country if they had severe childcare difficulties, which is what Dominic Cummings and his wife had. They were in a in an awful dilemma. And what I see here, actually, is a man who is not like thousands of the rest of us. I appreciate that, that most of us haven't had the luxury of being able to move somewhere else or to, uh, you, you, you know, have other people look after our children and so on and so forth, as, as Aisha says. But Dominic is not one of the thousands of thousands of people. As Aisha said herself, he's the most important advisor to the prime minister in a time of obscene national crisis. And I see here a man who was torn between doing his job, a job that he obviously takes extremely seriously uh, in Parliament, and doing his job as a father. And he was no doubt torn between what was best for both his boss and what was best for his family. But being and as in that dad, position, I mean, though, the, shouldn't, the he have, shouldn't he have, you know, been whiter than white and have recognised the fact that he would be judged by even, by even sort of anything that looked as if he wasn't in keeping with the rules? Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. First of all, none of us is whiter than white. And secondly, it didn't matter what Dominic Cummings did in this situation. He would have been absolutely torn apart from the media by it. And that's the problem. The no, media... No, no, no. Suzanne, he wouldn't he, have been he, torn apart. Ran... None of this... If he had stayed at home... But if he had stayed at home and if he had uh, locked down like everybody else, self-isolated, none of this would have happened. He wouldn't have been torn apart so by the media at all, surely? Hang on a minute. So if he'd have stayed at home with his wife seriously ill and him seriously ill right. and unable Tens to look after his of other families up and down the country and have had to do. Had, and something had gone wrong, how do you think the media would have reacted to that? How would they have reacted if he'd, say, got childcare in? Well, that would have been a problem as well because they'd have said he'd invited somebody else into his household. What if he'd farmed his child out alone to somebody else? He'd have been in trouble for that as well. The fact is he was caught behind a rock and a hard place here. The, the media as a whole, not everybody, obviously, doesn't like Dominic Cummings because he was the architect of the Brexit campaign. This is almost a continuation of the Brexit Remain debate in many respects. It's a visceral hatred of Dominic Cummings that many people have. It doesn't matter what it is. Dominic Cummings could walk on water tomorrow and the headline in the press would be Dominic Cummings can't swim. Aisha, He's what do you... Really just, let's bring in goes to the heart of it. Aisha here. What do you make of that? Is it because people simply don't like Dominic? The media are out to get him? Is that why there's been such intensity over this story? Do you agree with what Suzanne said there? No, I don't. The, the reason why this is such a story is that you have the chief principal advisor to the prime minister, the man who designed the very good slogan, by the way, stay at home, protect lives, save the NHS flouting his own rules. The reason why this is a story is because what people absolutely hate is weapons, greed, hypocrisy. The me And by the way, attacking the media is just a sign that you have lost the argument. And any politician who has done something wrong, the idea that they just go on the rampage is a sign that they haven't got a leg to stand on. And the idea that this is just some kind of like Remain plot is ridiculous because loads of people who are Brexiteers. Let me read you a text from a prominent Tory who is a Brexiteer who texted me yesterday, Rose Garden and everything, I think we know who the Prime Minister is. The party has lost its moral compass. And that is from a Brexiteer, Boris Johnson supporting MP. And I think the reason why this story has really cut through is I go back to my central point. This is such a horrible, horrible crisis that we're all in. We have lost thousands of our loved ones. The body bags are stacking up in mortuaries. We're on track for being the worst in Europe, possibly the second worst on the planet 
in terms of our death toll. The testing has been a fiasco. People are incredibly worried about their lives and their livelihoods. And then on top of that, we have the architect of the rules, not just flouting the rules, but doing it with such arrogance and such hubris and such lack of humility. That is why people are angry. Because as I said, again, this is an insult to anybody who had to say goodbye to their loved ones on an iPad because they couldn't see them. To all those people who couldn't have a proper funeral, to that little boy who was buried without his family there. That is why this story is an insult. And it is an insult to those people to try and make this a, a Brexit issue, quite frankly. And I mean, you know, it is heartbreaking what people have had to go through. Suzanne, we've had the medical experts coming forward. We had a professor yesterday who said, actually, this has trashed the health advice. He has risked lives by doing what he's done. There was another a prominent doctor this morning who said the statement from Cummings really only reinforced his clear disregard for public health guidance. I mean, this could have actually affected lives from the point of view that if people have that perception that he can break or bend the rules, then they can too. Look, he didn't bend the rules. The media have made umpteen claims that he bent the rules. He hasn't bent the rules. What about, Jenny driving, what about the drive to the castle? Well, it, I, you know, I, 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 he, he obviously did what he thought was right and that was within to test his the eyesight. Of the law at the moment. And uh, well, that the was a clear that breach, Jenny, though, wasn't it? Jenny, Jenny Harry said there are exceptions to be made when it comes to childcare. And notwithstanding that this is a terrible crisis, uh, and yes, many of us are very fearful, the fact is no harm was done by what Dominic Cummings did. There's far more harm, frankly, but there by could the, have media, been harm. the media and, and outside Dominic Cummings' house, which is, let's not, let's not forget this, this is one of the reasons why he felt it was much safer to take his family to Durham in the first place, because he was being attacked for apparently turning up at a meeting or not turning up at a, at a SAGE meeting. Uh, again, this kind of a get Cummings attitude that we felt here so strongly, to the point where you had media doorstepping him, despite the fact that he and his wife and child were ill inside that house. I think they made absolutely the right decision to get away from that toxic environment on the pavement. We saw yesterday the shameful scene of journalists haranguing a man for supposedly breaking social distancing rules, why themselves playing absolutely no distancing, no no, 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 uh, no do, doing nothing to socially distance yeah. themselves. Complete and utter hypocrisy. If you want to talk about hypocrisy, let's talk about no, that no, no. too. Well, we I'm would, uh, Suzanne, we absolutely agree because those pictures, undoubtedly, I'm sure Aisha would agree with that, that the pit, you can understand Dominic Cummings' fears for his young family, Aisha, when you see that pack of journalists and protesters outside his house on his street. Not just for him, of course, but for the other neighbours that live on that street that are having to put up with it. As a father myself, I can understand his instinct to think, do you know what, I want to take my family away from this. They don't need this. I, I, it's my job. I have to deal with it, but they shouldn't have to deal with that. So, on that, the idea that he is now this kind of victim, there are MPs up and down the country, many female MPs, who get death threats, rape threats. There are MPs that have panic uh, um, alarms all over their house. Yeah, it Just doesn't make it OK, though, does it, Aisha? I'm not suggesting, you know, that the reality is you can see from those pictures, as Hussain's saying, and all of those journalists on top of each other, that that doesn't make it OK. Not saying it's all right, but that does not mean, that does not give him carte blanche to flout the rules. Now, what should have happened is he should have spoken to the police and the police should have been there outside his house marshalling the press, saying to them, don't be within, you know, two feet, metres of each other. That's what should have happened. But I'm sorry, the central charge remains, and we've had lots of different excuses now from Suzanne, and I do admire her, um, you know, attempts to defend the indefensible here. You know, we've heard the sort of, oh, it's it, nothing actually that bad happened. You know, it could have happened, but it didn't happen. The facts remain. There was nothing exceptional about Dominic Cummings. He is a married man with a wife and a four-year-old son. There are millions of people up and down this country in the same position. My own brother, who's a doctor, got sick. His, nurse, his wife is a nurse. I mean, th these are the challenges that everyday families are facing up and down the country. There has been so many cases where one person could get sick and then the other one might get sick, and they've had to muddle through. 
What about people with disabilities? What about single parents? They have all had to muddle through and they have done it with a huge amount of sacrifice okay. and resolution. So the, so, so the only person who isn't allowed to muddle through and do what they think is right is Dominic Cummings. That's ultimately what you're saying, I think, Aisha. You're using, you, you've talked about one rule for him and one rule for everybody else. Actually, I think you've just proved your own point. There's one rule for the rest of the country that does what they think is best. And as a parent, I'd walk over hot coals for my family. I don't care what the law would be. I'd defend them to the utmost. Dominic Cummings is no different from thousands of parents out there. He did what he thinks is right. Different. And he's the only one, the only one. There have been plenty of other Labour MPs who've broken the rule, that, that Labour MP that went to a funeral, Stephen Kinnock driving hundreds of miles to go and visit his parents. They haven't had the media pack hounding them out of office on the doorstep. It is one rule for Dominic Cummings and one rule for everybody else, but not perhaps in quite the way you think. Good luck with that argument with the public, Suzanne. At the end well, of the, the day, he flouted. He finish, Suzanne, let me finish. You've had your say. Hang on. He flouted the rules because he thought he that he was better than everybody. He said the guidance does set doesn't say you just have to sit there. Yes, it does. So many parents have made these sacrifices, and the idea that you say he's a better parent because he broke the law oh, and he broke the rules. Not what I'm that saying, is Aisha, and you know that very well. Absurd. That is, and by the way, it now turns out we realise Mary Wakefield, his wife, can drive. So why she did wasn't he? She the one that had to drive back to London, it, was she? Well, why? Why did? She, why could she have not driven back to London? Yeah. And I think Robert Pearson asked the question and yesterday at the Prime Minister conference. What if Dominic be on that, Aisha? Why didn't, why didn't the government car service? Why wasn't the government car service involved? And they could have gone to pick him up. This whole thing doesn't pass the smell test. No. And the, uh, the common sense person on the street can tell when a big old tall story it has know. been... Unfortunately, Suzanne and Aisha, we're going to have to leave it there. We do appreciate you joining us both this morning and giving us your perspectives.